Shader Shaper landed in the Blender scene recently, and it immediately piqued my interest, because it promises a one-click map generation and shader setup, meaning you can just select the texture node and hit generate, and the add-on automatically produces bump, normal, and depth maps, and hooks them into your material shader. But can it really do that? That's a bold claim, but it definitely grabs the attention of anyone who spent time manually baking or painting maps. So let's see what this is all about. In terms of features, Shader Shaper packs a lot of functionality into an easy workflow. Installation involves a one-time setup of a few Python libraries and downloading an AI model, but once that's done, it is smooth sailing. And using it is straightforward. You go into Blender Shader Editor, select an object's material, and hit the Generate button in the Shader Shaper panel. The add-on then creates new texture maps and automatically adds necessary nodes and wiring into the shader network essentially building a proper displacement and normal map setup for you. The good thing about the UI is, all the controls live in the Shader Editor site panel, with clear labels and tooltips, so it feels native to Blender. You can choose the output map resolution, aspect ratio, and even the normal map y-axis format, to ensure the textures work in your target game engine or render engine. Once generated, a set of interactive sliders appear, letting you tweak things like detail strength and smoothing in real time. This means you can dial in the exact look that you want without rerunning the whole process. Shader Shaper isn't just a one-trick pony that just spits out generic maps. It actually gives you as an artist a lot of creative control over the result. For example, you have separate micro-detail sliders for the displacement versus the normal map, so you can make a surface bumpy in the normal while keeping the displacement smoother. This is great for creating layered material effects. The add-on also includes cool options, like distortion removal or flattening that lets you correct or stylize the depth results. In my test, I could use flatten to ensure things like brick wall textures had truly flat mortar areas, fixing the common AI quirks where everything ends up a bit wavy. The interactive smoothing feature, especially the seam smoothing, can be a lifesaver if your source image isn't perfectly tileable, so it helps bend the edges so the generated maps can still tile nicely. I even cracked up some settings to see how wild it can get. The developer knows that you can get some truly bizarre results if you play around with these settings. One particular impressive use case is breathing life into the old texture images. The add-on space showcases a comparison where the left material used shape or shader to generate new depth and normal maps from just a plain diffuse texture, while the right material used the original handmade depth normal maps, and the difference in realism is pretty striking. I tried a similar approach on some of my own flat textures, and got results that genuinely made the materials pop with 3D detail. It is not magic. The quality of the output still depends on the input image, in addition to the AI's interpretation. But being able to turn a single 2D image into a convincingly detailed material, especially inside Blender, is gonna be a huge creative boost. Performance-wise, I was pleasantly surprised at how snappy Shader Shaper is, considering it's doing heavy-duty image processing and AI-based generation under the hood. The add-on supports GPU acceleration for NVIDIA CUDA and AMD cards, on my NVIDIA GPU generating a medium resolution set of maps with the default small AI model took the order of seconds, not minutes. If you don't have compatible GPU or you chose to use the CPU, it will still work, but be prepared for longer wait times. The developer in the documentation even jokingly suggests that using a large model on the CPU might be so slow you could go and take a bath while it computes. In normal use cases with the recommended settings though, it is interactive enough to tweak sliders and use updates without much lag. Integration with Blender is seamless, everything happens within the shader editor, and the add-on temporarily locks other UI interactions during the map generation process to avoid conflicts. And there you have it guys. If you like this add-on, you will find all the necessary links in the description. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, also please subscribe to the channel, to receive more videos like this. Thank you very much for watching, 
and I will see you in the next one.